Welcome to Yansu, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we get into this, the map maker of this map actually hangs out on Base Trade TV from time to time. You can love him, you can hate him. Phoenix X Six Starcraft is the name of the man, and he told me yesterday he's like, there are actually Easter eggs hidden on the maps he makes in, in the form of Pindarian barrels now we found two yesterday while casting i'll try not to take away from the game but we are going to look for number three now welcome back to the acer team story cup i'm rifkin and spotty here in the lower left corner of the map the blue terran player from western wolves trying to bring it back for his team it is sting sting and this opponent in the upper right a man on fire someone call 911 get the fire emergency response team out here because it is the red terran unstoppable today lucifron now, of course, the Pandarian barrels we found are, uh, one was over here. The other was, I believe, somewhere over here on a cliff hiding. Yeah, number two. So we have to find number three sometime throughout the course of this game, and I don't want to take too much away from it. We'll keep an eye on build orders from now, but of course, TVT takes some time to ramp up. Whether it's going for mech, whether it's going for bio. I wish I could tell you, I haven't had the pleasure of ca uh, casting a whole lot of Sting, so I don't know necessarily what his playstyle is going to lean towards, but actually, I forgot to mention top right, we do have the scoreboard, you guys can see, this is a best of nine clan war, it's a best of one between these players, but it's currently 3-0 to oh for Mouseport, so Lucifer has secured a brilliant victory, a very, a very good start, to say the least, for Mouseports today. Now, where is that third pesky barrel? This is going to drive me nuts when we look for it. <laughs> What I probably should have done yesterday was, like, after the games were over, just load up the map and look myself. Instead of doing it so unprofessionally as so, but you guys know as well as I do, not a lot goes on in the early game for TVT. We're gonna have the scout come out here, and they're both opening marines, no reapers. Oh, dear Phoenix, where did you hide that last pesky barrel? <laughs> Anyone who's, like, just tuning in right now is like, what is he doing? Is this observer drunk? Go home, what are you doing? All right, I can't find it for now. We'll we'll just if we accidentally happen upon it throughout the course of the game, fantastic. And if we don't, not a big deal. But gets in the big thing, of course, scouts the gas timings, sees that there's no no second gas really on. Really big deal because if there was, be rushing for banshees, and that's the last thing you want to see. But TVT, oh, hang on, hang on, oh, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. First blood. Anyways, banshees, like I was talking about before, I started having an aneurysm right there. Was uh. <laughs> They've become very common in this matchup. They're a lot more cheap, or a lot more cheap. They are cheaper <laughs> than they once were. And most importantly, they can actually straight up win you a game. If your opponent's unprepared, if they're not able to deal with it, if they don't have an appropriate marine count, no detection, no turrets, it can sometimes just straight up cost you the game. It's almost like Mutalisk versus Mutalisk too. When both players go for Banshees early on, whoever gets to the other base first typically wins, because the other person has to then come home and defend and micro like crazy to try and minimize the SCV losses, but... Very similar build orders right now. The only deviation thus far is that Lucifer's actually building his on the main or on location, and Sting is building his on in the main base to be a little bit safe. I remind you guys, this is again Sting. It's a barcode, but if you scan it, it's a Sting. I promise. I'm still looking for that barrel, even though I said I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. But one thing I love seeing—if you guys have actually seen Innovation play, his TVT might not be. The most immaculate thing in the world. In fact, even though he's probably like one of the best players in the world, his TVT is probably his weakest thing. But one thing Innovation does that I absolutely think is the coolest thing ever is when he brings the one Widowmine to go with the Banshee to try and bait out the Viking. But we actually don't have that rush coming out yet. What's my mouse doing? I'm sorry, one sec, guys. I got a piece of hair. Oh, there we go. Fixed. My apologies. This is the worst observing of all time, hands down. But luckily, all the issues have been taken care of now. I won't be searching for the barrel later on. And the uh, hair will not be on my mouse for the big engagements. But what I was going to say is we actually have, rather than rushing to Banshees, we have Hellions coming up for both of these guys. Uh, it looks like Sting's actually not even going to go for Banshee. Ooh, question mark? Yeah, no tech lab coming down in that barracks. Not sure if I'm a mistake or completely on purpose. No, absolutely on purpose. He's actually starting to move out with his units. But sadly, what he's going to find is more than enough of holding off any sort of early push. If he goes for a medevac, which looks like he is, he might try and elevate some units to the main. If he can sneak four Hellions into the main and get past the army of Lucifer that'll be sitting out here, that could be fantastic, but uh, Marines have to be so careful. Of course, Hellions deal bonus damage versus light, and Marines are considered light, but with four Hellions here as well, Lucifer is going to walk into an engagement that he can't really win, so forced to back up, Lucifer's another Hellion. Two Hellions for Neil so far. 
But anyways, the point of this medevac coming out is a little bit curious to me. We actually have Luzerfron investing not in a rave, or sorry, not in a not in a banshee as predicted, but in fact a raven early on. So Luzerfron was entirely playing defensive. Despite the way this looks, uh, he was expecting a Banshee to come, so we had the Viking come out early, Raven coming for detection, but uh, with the Viking on the low ground, it's actually going to serve as a nice tank for this army. It's not going to go down very quickly. Well, I take that back. It did go down pretty quickly, but so did the army of Sting, and forced back up. Thanks to that medevac, will get out alive, albeit just barely. But at any rate, having a Raven on the field is never bad. One of my favorite... I should make a first blood emote! It's Dismay, you're a genius! I'll look into that as soon as the broadcast is done. Rain, if you're in the chat, the challenge is issued! But anyways, the elevator looks like it did go off in the main. A couple SVs killed by that heli drop, but again, very limited on what it can do to Lucifer's very quick reaction time. Uh, but the Banshee's now coming out, and what I was going to talk about the Raven before I got distracted by the first blood comment was... What are you going for, Seeker Missiles? I mean... Seeker missiles are kind of a toss in the air against Terran. Everything they have mobilizes so quickly. You can put a Seeker missile on a siege tank, and you can even have that denied if a medevac picks it up in time. But detection is always great. There's never a bad thing, to ha never a downside to having a Raven invested early on. You can get auto turrets, which are incredibly durable as all heck. If you drop four auto turrets in the mineral line of your opponent, they're not cleaning that up very quickly, and they're going to get some kills or two. And of course, point defense drones. They basically nullify damage from Vikings, from anything with a projectile, some Marauders, Banshees. So good to have, but looking for another place to come in. Seize the Banshee, actually. This is kind of important because as far as Sting knew, Lucifer had opened up defensively. Like I said, the Viking coming out first with the Raven to follow. Everything about this screams, I'm playing defensive. Now that he's actually seen the Banshee, really important that he followed it for a little bit there. He needed to know from which angle of attack it would come. And of course, if he was really quick, he maybe could have done some, some slick marine micro, but... Uh, whose scan was that? I really wish they had that for observer features, by the way. Like, they ping uh, when Nidus Worms come down, they ping when Nukes are coming down. I wish they'd ping for scans. I know the actual Game Heart uh, game itself does, but... I would love if they would do that, like, integrate that for the Blizzard UI. Meanwhile, looks like that drop with those Hellions are going to come down once again. And SCVs will be roasted. Oh, the one building the Supply Depot, too. That's a little bit rough, but going to pick up, going to get out of here. Again, <laughs> retaining the Hellions, but... Such a massive Hellion count coming out of Lucifron. This is, by the way, hilarious to watch when you got Mech coming out uh, versus Bio. Hellions with blue flame, they wreck marines. Marines don't even stand a chance. The downside is, Hellions don't do a lot of damage to anything else. So marauders, tanks, they're going to hold up pretty well against Hellions. But of course, Hellions, while they have low damage, that splash is never bad. If you've got 18 Hellions splash damaging three marauders, it's it's still going to be pretty darn effective. But Lucifron is uh, sort of camping here, making sure that this drop will not catch him off guard. And of course, I believe Sting at this point has scouted the extra factories. No! Ooh! Well, yeah, with the Hellion count this massive, he's got to know it's mech. Uh, you'd have to be blind to see this many Hellions and go, wait, is he still going bio? So, never mind, I take that back. But Banshee actually getting quite a bit of harass here. Not killing much as far as workers goes, but look, another scan has popped off. Chased off of this. Marines are going to be fall prey to the Hellions if they don't yep, lift off, but sadly the Banshee came back into vision. So that was a safe Banshee, but Lucifron kind of giving it away in the end. Siege tanks are up, though, and the Hellions, they might not take bonus damage, but they are lickety-split quick. They'll get in, and they will get out. And, of course, my favorite thing to watch is when you see players actually get the Hellions right on top of the tanks. They're fast enough to get there. They're light so they don't take bonus damage, and they've got just enough health to squeeze on in. And, of course, if you get on top of the tank, there's that dead zone immediately outside of them. Now, ooh, oh, what he could do is siege up down here, right, Lucifron that is, pick off the tech lab, pick it off the barracks, force him to lift and move, and looks like that's exactly what he's going to do, utilize the high ground thanks to the Raven, and of course with his Vikings, of course he does have air control, can he get the stim, I don't think so, if he got the stim though, that would have been massive, that could have been, like, almost game ending for someone like Sting here in the early game, Raven goes down, point of his drone is thrown down, however, a little bit irrelevant, losing the high ground vision, forced, Actually, no, the Viking still stands, so he still has the high ground vision, I take that back. But either way, both players losing quite a bit there. Blue Flame Hellions are going to try and wrap around, go to the natural, if the option was available. But looks like Sting, with some great reactions, will shut that down. And the tank from Lucifer actually takes out one of the tanks of Sting. So still alive. Not going to get much done without that vision. Should pull it back. Lucifer! No! This is a good tank! This is a good man! There's no reason to let him die! All right, well, <laughs> still in a pretty good spot. He's got a very robust army, does Lucifer on it. Hellions with blue flame, again, going to just run train on the bio. 
The Marauders, they're not going to take a lot of damage, but of course it all comes down to that splash, and the Marines are just going to evaporate. So with no support to the tanks, it's very easy for Lucifer to get that tank advantage, that sort of edge over his opponent. The downside, though, is Bio not only does it produce significantly faster and more efficiently than Mech does, it... it <sighs> It's more mobile. It's hard to keep up when you've constantly got these big beefy tanks or Thors or Hellbats. They can't keep up with Medivex constantly flying around a drop and they can't keep up with the Marines stimming in. And sometimes the bio wins through mobility more than actual sheer power. But speaking of sheer power, big drop coming in the main of Lucifron. Some damage is certainly going to be done. The army is cancelled immediately as the SV is pulled back. Uh, no cancel actually on the physical army. I just meant that the building process was cancelled but still works out in the end. Hellion's going to do a lot of damage to the Marines, of course, do that blue flame, and it looks like a pickup is going to happen. No anti-air to be found. The problem with mech, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you here. You can actually... What's going to happen is Lucifron's going to have to invest in quite a few Vikings. He needs to keep that air control, because if Lucifron gets caught off guard, like if Sting makes one Banshee and has air dominance, GG, all of Lucifron's tanks are gone, and without tanks, you cannot hold off the bio. Or, sorry, you can't hold off the Assault, I should say, more importantly, but whether it's Bio or whether it's Tank follow-up of his own, either way, Sting, perhaps going to recognize the lack of anti-air that Lucifer has and take advantage of it. Might just keep up with the mobility of the Bio. Again, that is the strongest suit in this game. Well, scans going off relentlessly. We don't quite have 11 and 13 orbitals apiece yet, so we're not going to have infinite scans available. However, still scanning is going to be important. We're going to see sensor towers make their way into the map probably within the next, I'd say, five minutes for Sting. He's, or sorry, not for Sting, for loose front of it. Uh, that way he knows where the drops are coming from well ahead of time. Love the siege tank spread here. Safe than sorry and all that goodness, Make sure he, making sure that he doesn't get caught off guard. But of course, the danger is when you spread your siege tanks out like this, it's very easy for Stim to bio to come in, drop on top of the tanks, and take them out pretty quickly. And again, without that Viking control, it's actually incredibly easy for Sting to just drop right on top of the tanks. And let's not forget how much of a danger friendly fire can be. Terran, of course, the most volatile race. We've got nukes, we've got secret missiles, we've got Widow Mine Splash, we've got Siege Tank Splash. There's no end to our friendly fire. But okay, Helen's gonna try and protect against exactly what I was just predicting. But of course, it's not the Hellions that are so scary. It is the splash damage from the tanks. One tank already going down. Two tanks going down. Friendly fire is a hell of a drug. But looks like with that tank line breaking, becoming a little bit weaker than before, this is going to open the door for Sting. But due to that point defense drone, the Marauder damage just cut in half, and the tank only just barely goes down. That point defense drone was the difference of Sting going down and Sting pushing past that initial tank. But with the second tank going down, third tank not quite in range. Sting's actually secured himself a very good spot. Meanwhile, drop going off in the main. Oh, God, he gets on top of the production of, of Lucifron. This is the most dangerous, the most vulnerable part of playing mech. Your production is everything. And looks like he might not kill a lot of them, but picks off some tanks, picks off some potential reinforcements, and due to this, Lucifron will lose his third base. Sting should be able to force a lift off at the very least. But, of course, due to the tank positioning... And the fact that these are Marauders. Uh, I think he could have picked off that tank of loose front, actually, but he's going to play it safe and sorry. No Medivacs to get him out of there. Another big drop heading towards the main. Again, his goal is to pick off the production. But, oh, SCV is going back to work. Tank going to reposition. Can, oops, can Sting get in position in time? Looks like not. However, with the army stimmed, he's going to drive tanks down the, the ramp. Heli is coming out, but with no avail. I mean, the Marines might take bonus damage, but the Marauders don't. And again, the Marauders are in the powerhouse of this army. Siege tank not being focused. However, we've got another push coming in, just walking in. No drops. Gets right on top of the tanks. Sting will take out Lucifer. They are his Lucifer's tanks, I should say. It's not the end of the game yet. Don't don't get too ahead of yourself, Rifkin. But he is the top of the production. Looks like it is actually the end of the game. Good <laughs> game is called. And Sting will finally put Western Wolves on the board. I was calling for check, but I'm glad I was wrong because Sting was able to bring it and bring it hard. Lucifer now being knocked out. However, don't be sad. You may see him come back later, guys. Let's not forget the Acer Team Story Cup has the resurrection rule for the ace match. And if you're unfamiliar with what I'm referring to, when you're on match point, you may resurrect or replay one player that you've already played today, whether they've won or whether they've lost. So maybe they get on match point, they can bring Lucifer back. Not the end of the world.